Hello, and welcome to this CUBE conversation with Morpheus, where we will be discussing hybrid cloud platform operations and the cloud operating model. I'm Rob Streche, Managing Director with CUBE Research. Today, we'll be speaking to Brad Parks, Chief Product Officer for Morpheus, about how organizations are shifting to a cloud operating model that is not about a place, but how organizations have become more agile and automated in the manner they provision and manage applications independent of the under underlying place and technology. Welcome, Brad. Thanks for joining us. Nice to be here, Rob. It's always great to have you on. We've known each other, for, you've been on for a while. It's been a long time. Yeah, and I think, again, this is really interesting stuff, and I think it's, it's really great to see how Morpheus is getting about. I mean, you guys started uh, seven years ago, Really, what's changed over that seven years? Yeah, it's been a fun ride. Um, obviously, you, knew, you and I knew each other when we were in the infrastructure world, but now I've, I've moved up stack over the last seven years, and it, it's really been a corollary for, for also how customers are maturing over that time, right? When I first, uh, first joined Morpheus, customers were still in kind of the early days of this cloud adoption. I mean, cloud's been now around forever, but there was that initial kind of lift and shift debacle where people had pain around, you know, cost and kind of doing it the wrong way. Now they're really adopting more of that cloud operating model, as you described, where they're wanting to deliver agility to their developers, but at the same time, wrap governance and guardrails around how they're dealing with things. Is that how it looks today? I mean, is that really what they're leaning in on? Yeah, I think the, uh, the big piece that we're seeing from customers is that it's platform operations, right? It's about the platform. It's not about the place. It's not about an individual app. It's about a way of doing, you know, doing business or doing IT that represents, you know, public cloud, private cloud, hosted cloud, edge clouds, developers, security, finance, operations. It is all really coming together in a melting pot. And that is what platform operations is all about. Yeah, we, we see that too in, in the data that we see. And we also see it that, you know, platform operations, the platform engineering teams, and all of that joining together, like you said, cross FinOps, SecOps, DevOps, IT Ops. Really, this is the new IT. And, you know, when you start to take a look at it and kind of shifting gears a little bit, how has it been with the macro trends? Because the market's been really crazy over the past couple of years, to put it mildly. Yeah, we've uh, we've been growing uh, leaps and bounds. I mean, 35, 40% year over year. Um, and, I, and I think a lot of it is, I hate to say the market, kind of coming to us. I mean, I'm, I'm a one-trick pony. I have not changed kind of my talk track or how I, how I engage with customers. But, you know, four or five years ago, I talked to a, a head of IT, right? We'd do a demo. We'd talk about developer self-service and developer enablement. They would say, that's great. That is absolutely where I need to get to. But... I'm not there yet. I don't have the team. I don't have the people. I'm still trying to deal with my public cloud, you know, cost problems. Today, those same IT leaders are coming back. You know, I'll see them at a trade show and I'll say, hey, guess what? I'm now the head of platform. Developer self-service is, you know, an initiative we are investing in. Can we talk? And so that's been a, a great uh, maturity for us and for the market. Yeah. It's not just about the day zero problems anymore. I, I think it's really gone to day one and day two as well. And I think, again, as the market has shifted, I mean, there's consolidation everywhere. You got Broadcom acquiring VMware. And how do you see that impacting the customers and organizations that you talk to on a daily basis? Yeah, I think the um, the the Broadcom acquisition of VMware has been a, a huge tailwind for us. It's also been a big challenge for a lot of customers. And I you know, I love VMware. Right, we've won best of VM world twice for hybrid cloud orchestration. Obviously, we have over a million VMs under management. But as customers are reevaluating how they think about their application footprint and their relationship with vendors, it's definitely been a big tailwind for us. We have a lot of customers who are saying, "Hey, I'm still going to use VMware, ESX, you know, vSphere, NSX, but I want to have some freedom of movement." I may need to replatform some apps to a different on-prem hypervisor. I may want to move some apps, you know, up into the public cloud, take advantage of cloud native services. I may accelerate my shift to things like Kubernetes, but I don't need four different kind of silos around how I provision and manage and govern that process. And so they need a unified control plane. And that's really where we come in. That is what we 
what we provide. We're a Google Translate, if you will, for developers and product teams who are trying to provision into all those different environments. Yeah, I mean, it is about simplicity. And I think that's a lot of where people are leaning in is that, and we see that hybrid model, the multi-cloud model really being the way forward. In fact, in the ETR data that we have, it really, it's balancing out over the next couple of years where net new applications are not just going to the cloud first. And they are really balancing between on-premise, co-location, you know, maybe cloud adjacent and being in that cloud native way. What are you seeing from organizations and are they just hiding that fact that they're going all cloud native now and pushing in on that? I don't think they are really going all cloud native. Um, to your point, that that stasis almost, that right mix. You know, we've talked about hybrid cloud for a long time, and it was you know maybe five six years ago a little hand wavy, but really, you know, you got some repatriation. It's not going to be a, a shift left where everybody is you know going from public cloud on prem. But as you've got things like Gen AI, you've got more distributed edge workloads. There's certainly data that's going to stay on prem, and there's a, a place for true cloud native. Um, that that healthy mix has somewhat reached a, a stasis and there's going to be a little movements, but um, oftentimes I, uh, I talk to customers and I, I refer to leaves, trees, and forests, right? There are leaf level conversations, right? My app does my thing. Tree conversations, you know, I'm the VMware admin or I'm the AWS team. And then there are forest level conversations and we're seeing more and more of those forest level conversations where customers need a, a consistent way to provision apps, govern who's provisioning into what location, doing reporting and chargeback around those apps. Those all need to happen in a consistent way, independent of the underlying compute format, right? VMs or containers, and location, right? On-prem, VMware, Nutanix, Microsoft, AWS, Azure. So that, that in a nutshell, is, is where we come in. We're that, that leveling layer that, that stands between the cacophony of all the different formats and what has to be operationally relevant for the customer. Love cacophonies. <laughs> I, I think actually that hits on a good point because I think to your point about VMware not going away, I don't think it is either. I don't think VMs are going away. I think that there's such a large investment and I think it's similar to mainframe where mainframe hasn't gone away. You still have people with data on mainframe. But I think one of the important things that we see challenging some organizations is the, the partner ecosystem, the partner landscape. As an ISV, an independent software vendor, how do you see the changing landscape within the partners that you're working with? Yeah, it's been a, a big opportunity for, for the partner community and particularly OEMs, global systems integrators. That's a big part of our, you know, how we talk to customers, right? We're, we're relatively small, even though we've won a bunch of awards. I'm obviously very proud of Morpheus. If I'm a, a global 2000 customer, you know, I'm investing with a Dell, an HPE, a Deloitte, an Accenture. Those are our partners. And so one of the things I think that impacted that community uh, with the acquisition of Broadcom uh, and VMware, they, they took away a lot of those OEM SKUs, the ability for those large partners to address that market. Um, and oftentimes those were the same partners that have sold VMware technology into these large organizations. And so they're now turning around saying, hey, I have an enterprise CIO who has a budget, who is trying to look at maybe minimizing their risk exposure because they're not sure what's going to happen. Saying, hey, can I, can I replace some of these kind of standalone tree level tools like a, a vRealize automation or an ARIA automation? I want to still use VMware, but now we have an opportunity to sell that platform to, to really lead with that forest level conversation. So the business we're doing, co-selling with HPE and Dell, um, even Nutanix, right? We, we've got a lot of that ecosystem that sur has surrounded VMware forever, knocking on our door and saying, hey, we customers need, need something to mitigate their risk. How can you help? With all these trends pointing to a hybrid multi-cloud operating model, that would seem to really fit and kind of lean towards what you guys are producing from a platform perspective. How do you see the competitive look or landscape and what does it look like? Yeah, um, outside of that kind of Broadcom VMware conversation, the other real thing that we're seeing come up often is, hey, 
I'm a big global 2000. I could build my own platform. Sure. I've got a bunch of smart guys. I, I sent Bob to Ansible camp or Joe really loves Terraform. We should do this ourselves. Um, it's a very valid conversation to have. If you're global 10 and you've got a thousand developers and you've invested $20 million in a platform, you could probably go do that. One of the things we often come into situations, though, I feel like uh, Homes on Homes. For the international audience, I don't know if that tracks, but it was a home remodel show where this guy would come in and- A Canadian show. It was a Canadian show. He would fix these home remodels gone horribly wrong. Oftentimes, we're talking to big companies. They'll say, hey, we've, yeah, we built, we built this provisioning engine a couple of years ago, and it'll, it'll stand up my app, but man, we, now we're changing our cloud strategy. We're changing our hypervisors. We've adopted a different pattern. We're moving in a different direction. Nobody's here to care and feed it, maintain it. We're sinking you know, good money after bad. How can you help? And so I would, I would say that's one of the things when we're competitively looking out there. There's the do-it-yourself crowd. And there are some other people that have approached this from different directions where they started as a FinOps tool and they're trying to do provisioning. Or they've started as a VMware tool and they're trying to go into public cloud. We started middle out, right? We started with the application, and the life cycle of that app, and all of the dependencies around it. And that's, that's really, I think, what has led to some of our growth this year. Yeah, I, I think that makes total sense because, I, again, we're big fans of open source. So it's not, uh, not like don't go and use open source. I think it's more about open source has its place. But what is really stopping companies from simply building it themselves and using open source, using Backstage and a number of other different sure. pieces going and using some of the FinOps stuff out of the FinOps committees and things of that nature. Yep. We also love open source. I mean, the amount of, of Terraform and Ansible and, you know, other programs that we or open tofu, wrap around. It's called, or yeah. open tofu, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hashi did themselves a disservice probably maybe by changing their licensing model and they've split it off into open tofu. All of those tools are good, but it's it's the right tool for the right job at the right time. And oftentimes, again, we'll, we'll come into a situation where a company has written, you know, a thousand Ansible playbooks to do what we do with a, with a mouse click, right? And use config management to configure your box. Use infrastructure as code to stand up your infrastructure. But there are always dependencies that surround these isolated tools. And that's that's really where we come in. We're a platform framework that lets you bring your tools, your processes, and your people to the party and kind of get what you need. And, and the questions I would, I guess, pose to any customers thinking about building it themselves is, you know, A, are you in it for the long haul? Do you have enough development talent, not just to kind of build it, but care and feed and maintain it over its life cycle for the next five years? Is platform building your core competency or are you a bank, a healthcare company? You know, focus on what you what you do well. Um, and, and our goal as a framework is to get people, you know, 80, 90% of the way there out of the box, but have that full extensibility so that they can do their own thing. They can add a plug in, they can extend it in a different direction to integrate with some homegrown tool. Yeah. I I think that to me ties really nicely into the work that we did for you recently, which was we completed a value assessment for Morpheus, where we interviewed customers to come up with a composite return on investment. All the organizations saw significant ROI. I mean, it was really incredible and believe they made the right decision moving away or avoiding a DIY build your own approach to hybrid cloud platform operations entirely. Uh, what was interesting in the study we did with your customers is that we found that there were several places open source was just not achieving their internal KPIs. What was also very interesting was the ability for organizations to get past just DevOps part of the problem, what we were talking about earlier about the day zero ops and really address day one and beyond that day two, things like SecOps and FinOps. What is, what is it that's common with all of these customers that you're seeing as you move forward into that, where you're not just about getting and provisioning the DevOps side of things, but you're really in, hey, I need to make this 
run and managed over time so that it's simple? Yeah, I think the the one of the commonalities, right? I mean, you and I both came out of engineering before we got on TVs and you know called ourselves product people, right? Engineers like to build things, right? And it's fun. Right? We're solving problems. We're hands on keyboard building things. That's the easy part. Sometimes building that initial day zero, as you mentioned, like provisioning pipeline that's integrated in, you know, into what I needed to get environments on demand. But the operating, right, the service levels, the security, the financial governance, those are often left to the side. And so you'll get companies who, who will build some sort of provisioning science project, right, stitch together a lot of open source scripting. Then it has to go to enterprise scale. Somebody has to has to care and feed it, make sure it's being patched. The upstream open source project you got doesn't have a security hole. That's where these things tend to fall apart. And so the commonality, I think, with a lot of those organizations is they were in highly regulated environments where they were talking about thousands or tens of thousands of machines at scale. And that takes a different level of thought than a guy in a corner building some cool toy to provision things in an automated way. There's so much more to the story. Yeah, I, I think that was one of the things that smacked me in the face in the report was the fact that the organizations were able to get to scale and simplify and actually be able to provision out applications in a much more efficient manner that helped them actually speed innovation. And I think that was another key to it was that really getting to innovation faster. Uh, now, I mean, you talk to customers all the time. What are the questions that customers should really be asking about a hybrid multi-cloud operating model and how they go after a hybrid operations platform and what, what should they be looking for? Yeah, I'll steal uh, some questions actually from one of the uh, CIOs that, uh, that I had you talk to. He's been at uh, several different companies, like large healthcare, large telco. One of the telcos even bought a company to do what we do. Not just the product, they bought the entire company and ended up not using it in place of Morpheus. And he, when he talks to other customers or have them on stage at, a, at an event, he, he describes it as you know a few key questions. First, yeah. do you have the right people, right? And the quantity of people, this is not something you go in lightly. Um, are you confident that those people are around for the long haul? Because if you're in an environment where you may be having to cut FTEs or reallocate them on different projects, you know, you need a stable development team to, to get this up and running. One of the other questions, not just people, are you stable in your cloud strategy? If you're a hundred percent one cloud and you're going to be in there forever, that's one thing. But if you might change your hypervisor, you might change your public cloud, things are going to change. If you have any uncertainty, again, not something to, to kind of go into lightly. And the other is, is just funding and resourcing. And in the macroeconomic environment we're in, if your funding model might change in a year, 18 months, two years, again, don't start something you're not going to finish. And most companies, when they really look, dig deep, they're not able to adequately answer those questions. So having a commercial platform to then build from is a lot easier than building that platform from dirt. Yeah. It's, it's about where you want to invest. And are you going to invest in the building out of the platform or are you going to invest in the innovation in your applications? Because I think that's where a lot of people get tripped up is, especially now that AI is stealing a lot of budget <laughs> from all over the place. Uh, so final word, where can people go to find out more about Morpheus and what should they know and where should they go look? Yeah, so uh, MorpheusData.com. Uh, Morpheus, like the character in the Matrix. Yes, we have a red and blue logo. We're, we're big Matrix fans. So MorpheusData.com is where you go to learn more. Um, you know, I'd say one of the nice things about being a software company is we show better than we tell. Even though I like to talk, get a demo, get your hands on it. Uh, we have a community edition, but we'd love to just roll up our sleeves and get a POC deployment, get on with your engineers, your devs, your security, your finance folks, get them all at the table start to explore what your problems are when all of those things come together and then see if there's a way we can help you out. Well, I, I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you for coming on today because I think this is something that's we've been around the block with this quite often. And I think this is one of those problems that uh, definitely is getting to a point where hybrid and multi-cloud is really the norm and really coming together. 
Uh, been a fun ride and uh, excited to keep going with you. And thank you for watching this CUBE conversation with Morpheus discussing hybrid cloud platform operations and the cloud operating model on the Cube, a leader in high-tech enterprise analysis and coverage.